Hey everybody, Greg here at VideoMaker with a Q&A. Before I get to the q and wanted to mention that VideoMaker is giving away a GoPro Hero 4. So at the end of this Q&A, you can enter for your chance to win that. Um, the question today comes from Danny, and this came via YouTube. And he asked, what is the difference between intra-frame and inter-frame? So if you don't know anything about this, these are basically two different types of compression. So when you shoot video um, on your camcorder or your DSLR, many cameras, if they're not shooting uncompressed or raw, are going to shoot compressed video. And there's a couple different ways that uh, most videos are compressed. And intraframe and interframe interframe are two different methods. So I'm going to start with intraframe because it's the easiest to understand and it sort of relates to how other uh, types of compression work. Intraframe takes every single frame and compresses it to save space, but doesn't care what frame comes before or after it. Doesn't try to do any type of what we call temporal compression, which is compression based on how things change over time. It's really just looking at the individual Im images, looking for redundancies in it so that it can, you know, efficiently compress it without too much trouble. Okay, that's intraframe. Now, interframe compression is a type of compression that takes into account other frames. So not only will it take one frame and compress it just like intraframe was, and they would call that an iframe, they also are going to look down at your future frames and try to figure out what's changing and what's staying the same. So this shot, for instance, I'm moving, my hands are moving, but the entire background is basically static and not changing. So we can take advantage of that fact and reduce the file size um, of our final footage. And this can be great if you're using a small memory card or you just don't have a lot of room on your hard drive, that can be a really good thing. Now, um, essentially what it does is it takes the initial frame, takes a future frame, and then it sort of uses the in-between frames and uses those as references to try to make sure the compression is good. Um, that's really at the heart of it. Now, the disadvantage here is even though uh, intra-frame codec has a larger file size, maybe even up to three times the size, it's actually easier for your computer to process it because essentially it can look at every frame and decode it without having to worry about what comes before or after it, especially if you're editing and you're cutting things. Now, if you have some compression that's based on a group of frames and you slice that group in half, well, now it has to do some recalculation. So, um, basically, intra-frame compression is easier on your editing system. Inter-frame is a smaller file size, but it's more difficult for your editing system to process. Also, even according to Canon, inter-frame compression um, is, can have a little bit less quality as far as the image quality and editing may affect your picture quality. So, um, for the most part, if size is not an issue, I would say go ahead and use intra-frame compression if you have the option. So, for instance, on the Canon 5D Mark III, you can either choose all I or IPB, and all I is the intra-frame compression type, and IPB, B stands for bi-directional, is the inter-frame type of compression. So, um, some other examples of all I are ProRes, uh, DNX HD, um, and the all eye from Canon. Some other examples of inter-frame co compression are uh, MPEG-2, so like the Sony XD cam uses that. Um, and so there you have it. Now H.264 as a codec can be used either way, um, but that's essentially it. Um, I will mention one other type of compression, even though it wasn't part of the original question. Uh, Canon has an IPP compression, and basically this uses that same initial frame, but rather than then comparing you know, a future frame and looking forward and backward, it really just moves forward without any regard for where they're going. So it's a little less efficient than the IPB, and you're gonna find that on the Canon 7D and the 5D Mark II, so just, just so you know. Now at this point, you don't really have an option for all eyes, so you're kinda stuck with it, you know, so. Bottom line is, if you're concerned about file size, you might want to use an inter-frame compression and you're just going to sacrifice maybe, you know, image quality. Now that's going to be debatable. I'm sure people are going to argue that you can't even tell the difference and maybe that's true. And you could say the same thing for computer processing power. A lot of computers today are plenty powerful enough to edit IPB right on the timeline, or I should say inter-frame compression because IPB is just the Canon version of it. Um, 
But you know, there you have it. In general, all eye is gonna be a better image quality and uh, easier to edit with. So um, now if you want to send in your questions, we have a few different ways to do it. So I'm gonna check my notes here so I don't forget any of those cool ways that you can send us questions. You can get us on Twitter at, at @videomaker. We can go to Facebook at facebook.com forward slash videomaker online, or you can send us an email at editor at videomaker.com. Um, also on the link below, you can sign up for our free e-newsletter. Basically what this is gonna do is, you know, videomaker.com has tons of content, and this e-newsletter is gonna help direct you to some of the strong content that we have so you don't just sort of get lost in the mix of everything and you can make sure you're catching all that great content that we produce. Um, okay, and then as promised, right here, you have a link for our GoPro 4 giveaway. Now, I should note that if you're watching this video after, uh, say, around February 2015, when you click on this link, you may see a page that's giving away something completely different, and that's because we already gave away the GoPro, and this video is on YouTube forever. So click on that link, and hey, you'll either be surprised or you'll enter to win for a chance to win a GoPro. I'm Greg with Videomaker. Thanks for watching.